I'm Bernard Gersh from the Mayo Clinic, and with me today is Dr. Randy Thomas, who's Director of our Cardiovascular Health Clinic and uh, Preventive Cardiology at Mayo. And we're going to talk about a very interesting topic, really, and one we haven't discussed before, and that is the role of exercise in depression, in, particularly in cardiac patients. Randy, as someone like myself who, who exercises a lot and enjoys it, and it makes me feel good, and I don't think I'm depressed, um, it doesn't come as a surprise that exercise is good medicine for depression. That's exactly right. You know, there's been long, been long known that exercise helps us feel better. There's this concept of the runner's high. In fact, even all the way back to Hippocrates, uh, depression was treated with exercise. So it's been known for many years that uh, there's a, an elevation in our mood as we exercise more. I'd love to go back to the Hippocrates part, but we don't have the time. But Depression is very common in patients with coronary disease, very common post-myocardial infarction. And what's the data, that objective data, that depression really benefits these patients? And then I, if you'd go on from there to heart failure. Yeah, just a, a couple of main points. Uh, somewhere around 15 to 20% of people post-MI have severe depression. Another 15 to 20% have some depressive symptoms on top of that. Studies have been kind of mixed on what is best, what's the best way to treat these patients. Medication therapy may be helpful in alleviating symptoms, but probably doesn't help improve outcomes very much. Exercise is I mean, the, the randomized trial data on medications for depression in post-MI patients was not really very impressive, was no, it? I mean, there was no, no difference in outcomes, maybe just some difference in symptoms. Mo modest improvement in symptoms. In heart failure patients, it doesn't look like the medication helps improve their depression at all. So what's been thought to help is exercise. And until now, there's not really been a very well done randomized study comparing exercise, placebo, and medication therapy. But recently, a study was done to look at this. Uh, the upbeat- And this was, this was a study done in post-MI patients? Uh, patients oh. with known coronary disease uh, were eligible for this study. Uh, it could have been post-MI, could have been post-PCI. Uh, but they had known coronary disease and known depressive symptoms. And randomized to exercise versus yeah. none. Half the patients had uh, severe depression, the other half had uh, depressive symptoms. This was in the Upbeat study. Uh, Jim Blumenthal was the primary investigator in this study. He was from, uh, from Duke. And what they found was very interesting. They found that the depressive symptoms improved about the same in the medication and the, um, the exercise groups. But in the severely depressed patients, the exercise group actually did much better. Their depressive symptoms improved much better. About 40% of those patients in exercise had remission of their severe depression, and only about 10% in those with medication therapy did. And so there's the added advantage, because not only are you improving symptoms, but you're improving physical fitness. Exactly right. Which medications are not going to do for you. It's, it's one of the reasons, one of the several reasons why exercise probably helps benefit patients with cardiac disease. So Randy, the other group, another Blumenthal study was multi-center, but uh, Jim Blumenthal's from Duke University, right? Multi-center in uh, CAD patients. There was another study, the HF Action study, that actually was that we in heart failure of. patients. We were part of that, uh, that uh, project. And what, they, what was found in that study was that exercise did improve depressive symptoms in heart failure patients, um, whereas the medications and other studies have not been very impressive in the heart failure patients. So here again, it's, it's like a, a sort of beneficial two-edged sword. Uh, not only are you improving symptoms, but I presume uh, you're improving exercise tolerance. Exactly. Which Multiple, in turn is going to result in an improvement in symptoms. It's, it's as close as we can get to the fountain of youth, I think, is exercise. There's so many mul multiple benefits. And you, know, you think about exercise, why is it causing these symptoms? Why is it helping these symptoms? And of course, there are biochemical reasons, endorphins, and keflins, serotonin improve with higher intensity activity. But probably there's something to the fact that there's some socialization, there's movement, there's, there's a number of things that may lead to improvement in mood as well. In fact, one of the criticisms of, I, I think there was a German study of exercise rehabilitation versus none in post-MI patients. And mm -hmm. one of the criticisms was that they didn't prove the point that exercise per se was beneficial. It was the whole experience of being part of a rehab group, so socialization, 
uh, eliminating social yeah. iso isolation, which is a yeah. prominent cause of depression. There is a big part to that, definitely. So do you think that um, if you take out some of the ancillary effects of exercise, do you think that there is a physiologic biochemical response per se that could improve depression. Yeah, and this has been shown pretty well now, I think. So uh, serotonin in particular, which is really kind of one of the major components that we're looking at, serotonin does increase with aerobic exercise. That's been shown. There's, a, there's an increase in release of serotonin and an increase in production of serotonin both. Which, which, which certainly is antidepressant. Yeah. Uh, any evidence of exercise and arrhythmias post-MI? Uh, th there is some evidence to suggest that exercise may uh, improve ventricular um, ectopy control. Uh, there's there's some, some evidence that it may actually reduce the risk of severe cardiac events and cardiac arrest, but uh, that those mechanisms are, are less clear. Atrial fibrillation and exercise is still kind of uncertain. There, there's, as you probably know, atrial fibrillation increases if you have long endurance activity over a long period of time. Uh, the kind of the runner's heart, so to speak, may actually increase risk of atrial fibrillation. But, but, there's some, but I think there's epidemiologic data. I don't know if it was the physician's health study or which study it was, but uh, I think there's some epidemiologic data that regular exercise reduces the incidence of atrial fibrillation. Yeah, if, if for, the, for the average person, that's going to be true. It's going to reduce the risk. For those who are the marathon runners and the, uh, the high endurance uh, athletes, that's where you may run into more of a risk. And I suppose um, in terms of regular exercise, not the marathon runner, but one of the other benefits in terms of atrial fib, it probably ends up reducing blood pressure, yeah. hypertension, a major cause of atrial fibrillation. Yeah. And there are over 100 benefits that are purported to come from exercise. And uh, so it's, it's uh, again, closest thing we can get to Sounds the content like of you. exercise and moderate alcohol consumption always points in the right direction. There are simple solutions to problems, aren't there, sometimes? Randy, just a closing message for us in terms of um, our coronary patients. Should we en be entering all of them into cardiovascular rehab and exercises an integral part of cardiovascular rehab? Yeah, I, I think so. And I think it's important to, for us to remember that depression and depressive symptoms are very common in our patients, that we should look for them, that we should encourage exercise as one of the, the components to treating depressive symptoms. And even in the absence of depression, there's so many benefits that we should be encouraging all of our, our cardiac patients to consider a program of rehabilitation and exercise. Well, Randy, thank you very much. Uh, I think there's <laughs> nothing that we would disagree about yeah. at all. Great. Thank you. Thanks.